Hey guys, Charmin today, let's make a new two-way tier list for Summoners War in 2023 because recently we have new unit added to the two-way roster and many things about the game has changed so some two-way unit are not really that good anymore and some might be hidden gem that you might want to build as fun toys. So this tier list is based on my personal experience, your personal opinion might differ. So let me know in the comment section down below which one of these units are like your hidden gem. You love using it, but nobody talk about them. Let us know in the comment section. First, let's start off with 2A Water Vagabond. Nothing too special. Rina is still one of the most popular water tank for siege offense. And he's not a special unit for siege defense. And I think because 2A Vigor is pretty much one of the strongest water bruiser in the game, for many different content and he is a must do for sure and because of this guy who can tank, do damage, defense break and pretty much high base speed as well, this guy is quite irrelevant. We have the Dark Howl who was very good against Kinky and many other light unit in guild content. So it is a must do PvP unit mainly for Siege but a must do PvP unit for sure. We have the Wind Howl. I would say don't have to, nothing too special, like a mix between damage and healing, but not a fan of this unit. Next up, we have Darian. Ooh, this guy is, hmm, Darian, Darian has a special place in many old school players' heart. Recently, he's not very popular, but he's still a strong unit. I would highly recommend building this guy if you can get your hands on him, and he's going to be a great tank in Guild Siege. It can be a decent tank and some PvE content as well if you want to, like Raid. But I think mainly he can be a decent light tank in Siege and you may want to use him in Arena Defense as well. Coming up, Water High Elemental. This unit is a fun toy. Very good damage. I think same damage as Kali because of the high base attack. Has a good two-turn freeze. But because she doesn't buff, so she's not as popular as Kali. And one of the main thing in Siege is going to be the Water Sniper. I think that guy does even more damage. And he's a 4-star unit, so he's not that hard to get. So a lot of people build the Water Sniper in Siege as their main Water Ignore Defense unit. So they kind of ignore this unit. But I think she can be a very fun toy as a Water Ignore Defense unit to go alongside with Kali. But Kali, on the other hand, is very versatile because of the buff that she can provide. I think Kali will be in the must-do tier because she is absolutely incredible in any offense content that you are playing with, with a buff and the great damage. Two-Way Dark Witch is arguably one of the best units for the Steel Fortress dungeon. You can also build her for your Guild Siege offense. So I think she is actually very incredible. Good stripper, good damage with a dot, good for PvP, good for PvE. So I think she's definitely one of the must-do unit if you get your hands on her. Water, what is this guy? Grim Ripper. I think probably don't have to. If you have the dark one, you're probably not going to build this one. It has a freeze and a strip if I'm not wrong. But because of the low base speed and bad AI, he's not very popular because most people have the Dark Grim Ripper who has AoE stun, AoE dot, and just very good in Siege offense and in PvE as well. So this guy is going to be a must do for me. Win Grim Ripper is potentially a fun toy for some people, but for me personally, I wouldn't build this guy. He can be a great damage dealer. He one shot, I think he get the skill up again immediately if he kill but then you can also do the same thing and it's much more fun and because of ydcb this unit will forever be one of the most popular unit in the game very cool unit must do for me personally is good in many pve dungeon it's fun for pvp as well so the entertainment value and the functional value of this guy is off the chart so this guy is absolutely incredible must do unit we have jubel here arguably the free to play kinky on revenge rune so this guy is very popular on Siege Defense for those who don't have a Kinky. When you're trying to one-shot him, it's not that easy because of the anti-crit passive and he's very annoying with the revenge and then he defense break, he provoke you. So it's great for Siege PvP. So I'm going to put him on there. You can also use him to tank any light threat on the enemy defense as an offense unit. So he's definitely going to be a great unit. We have the Dark High Element. So I think this girl is going to be a fun toy. Great AoE damage, funny self-career buff, 
can be a great fun toy for those who want to do some AoE damage. I love damage. So some people would put her into here, but because I like damage, I'm going to put her in there. Fire Vagabond, I think personally is an underrated unit. It has AoE Provoke, Defense Break, good support, which means he can be in the fun toy or in the PvP area. But not a lot of people build this guy. I think if they buff his Provoke a little bit more, then he can be pretty good. But because Fire Threat in Siege is pretty bad due to Tractor, so he will always go for Tractor. And speaking of Tractor, probably going to be a must-do tier. Because of this guy, this guy loses a lot of value. Because if you use this guy in Siege Defense, instantly get countered by this stupid unit. But AoE Provoke can be interesting. So I'll put him into the fun toy tier if you want to build him. Hey, maybe some some people out there are like a big Kyan fan. Let me know in the comments. We have the Fire Hellhound being a decent heal, decent strip. There was a moment in Tam where she was a pretty good siege defense unit, but nowadays, not so much. So I would put her into the fun toy tier and not a high priority for sure. The Light Witch is a very good AoE unit for the new Raid Dimension Hall grind farming dungeon thanks to the AoE damage. A great AoE damage in general, but not too crucial. She can be anti-revive as well. So I think a lot of people will put her into this tier. But I will personally put her into this tier because her damage output can be a bit lackluster. So she's in the fun toy area. But if you really want to build one for the Dimension Raid thingy, she can be in that tier. Great PvE unit. We have Lulu in the must build tier for sure. One of the best free to play healer in the game alongside with Riley. But you can't use Riley in 4 star siege tower. So Lulu's gonna be absolutely incredible. So one of the must build unit. Very, very good healer. And we have Megan here. So I have Megan. I have never 2 way this unit. And I have never felt the need to. Like I would really want to put her in here. But she kind of belongs here because she's using a lot of. Uh, arena offense, Giwa offense, but I have never to worry <laughs> because she doesn't get any new crazy changes. So she has remained the normal version and I've used her from time to time, but definitely a great unit. If you don't have a stat, then that's going to be one of your main attack buff and attack bar booster. But because of the introduction of Praline, the win Shokonai with a speed lead and attack and crit rate buff, I think she's fallen down a lot, but maybe for a budget player who cannot get Praline because he's a four-star unit, then this is a pretty great PvP booster for you. The win High Elemental, not a huge fan. Team up is dominated by Raok, and Raok is incredible at doing so. So any other Ra team up option is just not as fun as Raok. So I'm gonna put her into don't have to tier. We have Light Grim Ripper. So this guy, I think, is a great PvE unit with a max HP scaling, with the AoE defense break. Also, these two units combined together is great in the Dimension Ray thingy for the middle stage. Both do great, crazy AoE damage, both AoE defense break. So they are amazing for the middle stage of the Dimension Raid in pretty much every month because it's all the same anyway. We have Fire Witch Rebecca. So Rebecca, I think, is underrated because she has AoE heal cleanse, attack bar boost, and AoE defense break. Kind of a budget Annabelle. And Annabelle is a great unit and a very good overall, generally useful unit. So I think she can be a decent PvP unit with a lot of utility, but she's kind of underrated. So I'm going to put her into the PvP tier. And I think some people in the comment section will definitely defend me for that. She can be great in R5 maybe because of the heal cleanse and attack bar boost. That can be good if you don't have the Freya, the 4-star Sylphid that belongs in the team up team. But because the cool thing about Freya with her AoE cleanse is that she die and then she cleanse. So the team up will not take Freya and the team up will take the witch and the witch doesn't do a whole lot of damage unless you build her on damage. Maybe she's okay there as well. So... She might have some small use in PvE and she can be a decent healer for PvP. So I'm putting her into the fun toy tier, okay? We have Royd. Oh my god, Royd. I think Royd is must do. Okay, Royd is a tankier Lauren, pretty much. Attack by pushback, defense break, and no need for AI. Makes him a very, very good option for many different dungeons and great for siege offense as well and maybe defense too. So great unit overall. Definitely going to get counter by, um, by Tractor. Oh wait, I said earlier, 
Oh my, I just realized the fire one get countered by Windy. I keep saying tractor. I'm so sorry. You guys are probably so confused. Like, what is he talking about? How is tractor countering this guy? He get countered by Windy. So this guy is like a shittier version of Kakarno, pretty much. But Roy on defense get countered by tractor. But hey, not a lot of low rank player care enough to build tractor. So Roy can be pretty fun down there as well. Fire Grim Ripper. Oh. Long gone are the days where he is in the must-do tier. Used to be the best unit for the Giants dungeon. And he's actually very, very good for Siege offense for like the Dot team. The turn 2 team with these LD Dotter. And then you put this guy in and the Dot damage is absolutely mind-blowing. So I think it's going to be a PvP unit actually. I've seen him used in a lot of Siege offense team. So he's going to be in the PvP tier for me personally. I think he's still using TOA probably using toa so he's like in the middle pvp and pve tier but siege is like kind of pve as well i would put him in the pve tier okay he's still okay to use but not a must do anymore we have light high elemental oh this is like the lower damage version of the water and the fire version but she can heal so i usually build her with zero speed and use it with leo so she can have the higher damage that she need because if you build her like normally with speed, then her damage is pretty low. But when you build her with no speed and full damage with Leo, she can be pretty fun, but she will remain to be pretty fun. Light How. Okay, this is like the weaker version of Lulu, I feel. Some people use this unit because they are too lazy to build a Lulu, but they build this guy anyway. Can be a decent healer for PvP. And that's pretty much where I see this unit used. Win 2A, which could be one of the best stripper for the Steel Fortress dungeon, but AI is absolutely garble. So I'm going to put her into the fun toy and she needs skill up investment if she wants to be great in PvP because she's another strip into defense break, just like Gemini, but they buff Gemini and a lot of people have Gemini and Gemini is faster with Speedy as well. So nobody want to use this unit. So she'll probably remain as a fun toy unless she has higher base speed because she... She has just low base speed, very hard to build a team around her. So she will remain here until they buff her AI or buff her skill in general. Illusia, a crazy PvP unit for Siege. Some might say it's a must do, some might have multiple copies of her. But I'll put her into the PvP tier because she's mainly in Siege offense. She's not in Siege defense. And I don't think she is used in any PvE dungeon scenario. So she'll be in the PvP tier. We have Light Pixie. Okay, not a huge fan of this unit. Probably going to be in the don't have to tier. Not a huge fan. Doesn't do anything too special. And that's pretty much it. We have Light. Oh, wait. Next up, we have Water Warbear. Oh, my God. This guy can be pretty fun. I think I'm going to put him into the fun toy. Can tank Ciara Dominic. And because he can revive and he's pretty tanky. But he cannot tank forever. Unlike some other water tanker. Because Destroy Rune can really destroy all his HP that he can build up. So he's going to be in the fun toy. You can build him and can use him to tank some wind threat in the siege meta. Like Ciara or Dominic or Wind Panda. He can tank pretty well. Be more max rest. Despair so he can revenge and stun red enemies. Pretty fun. And triple HP. That's about it. Ikaru used to be in the must do tier but no longer in the tier anymore. So he's going to go down to the PvE tier. He's still using Raid. He's still used in some other speed dungeon team. And maybe he's still used in some PvP team that I don't know of. But he's still being used in dungeon farming. But not in the form of Triple Ikaru. Just one Ikaru and he's used in some different team. But not Triple Ikaru anymore. E Wait, not Illusia. This is the Fire Illusia. Fire Fairy. Very good stripper for special league. That's the moment you see this unit pop up a lot because she's stripped into slow debuff, which is really, really strong for turn one team. But she needs to get up investment. And when you use her in a normal RTA meta, she gets cucked by so many things like Josephine, Hey Gang, and many, many other things that is immune to stun because her whole thing is about stunning and slowing down the enemy, but can be pretty useful in PvP if you have one max skill. If you don't, then I wouldn't recommend trying to max her skill with free-to-play resources. I put into the fun toy tier because you have so many other projects to work on. I don't think you need a niche stripper anyway. So fun toy tier because everyone probably going to have a Clara from Guild Shop or just someone in Clara. So you have your AoE fire stripper already. So you're probably not going to use this unit that often. 
Fire Pixie. Probably used to be in the must-do tier as well for Giants, but nowadays, not so much. I will actually put it into the fun toy tier because in the dot team for offense, you will see the Fire Grim Ripper and two other AoE dot unit. You don't see this unit because you don't need to explode the dot immediately. You just let the dot blow up on its own because of the passive of the Fire Grim Ripper. The dot do a lot of damage anyway, so you don't have to explode it immediately. So she might be fun to use in TOA, but that's pretty much it. Fire War Bear is probably going to be underrated. Needs skill up to perform well, but can be a fun fire tank in the game we have windy and we have tractor we maybe in the future we have fire wabe immune to defense break and then he can be an insane tank fire element who knows but can be a fun toy can be very underrated because the damage he can reflect if you're not careful it hit really hard so if you see a fire wabe prepare to get your ass whooped okay because that guy know what he's doing wind fairy Unfortunately, damage scale with debuff is nowhere near crow level, so no real use in any dungeon. Gonna be in the lowest tier. Shannon, once again, same as the Megan. I only two-way Shannon because of the Giant Abyss dungeon. I only two-way her so that I can show her performance in the dungeon, but I never two-way her because I never felt the need to. But early game player might two-way this unit for the early Giant Abyss run, she make the run extremely safe with Gunsing, Attack by Pushback, Slow Debuff, 100% Uptime Defense Buff. She is an insane unit for Giants for early game, make it super safe with low rune quality. Ramagos used to be the God of Fun moment, but now it's just a fun toy because it can be extremely risky to use this unit to tank fire and return damage because you never know when they're going to proc a violent and Kakarno can one-tap Ramagos if Kakarno get lucky or Perna or whatever they're using on their defense. And the moment you lose this unit, it's instantly over. And your gear will not appreciate you wasting an attack on a Ramagon funny moment, okay? You know why DCV, that's what your gear is probably gonna say. <laughs> or good try, maybe. Win Inugami, probably gonna be a fun toy as well because he doesn't ignore defense and because we have bulldozer and living armor 2a they ignore defense they do some massive damage he can be a fun time to lead immensity into battle for the speed lead and that can be pretty much it he does okay damage but he requires defense break to maximize his damage so not a huge fan of this unit probably in the fun toy tier and there are many new guild war speed lead nowadays to use with immensity so you don't exactly have to use ramahan for that slot Light Fairy, Invincibility, Heal Cleanse, Decent Support, probably going to be in the fun toy, but because of Fran being free to play and kind of does similar thing to this unit, so she's going to be in a don't have to tier. You can build her, but that's probably going to be your own personal bias for this unit. Light Fairy, oh wait, Light Pixie, a Reviver, but very, very bad Revive mechanic, not a huge fan. Her auto skill provide nothing to the table. So I'm going to put her into the don't have to tier. Light War Bear. Oh my, this is going to be personal bias for me, okay? A normal person would probably put him in here because his skill 3 is too risky. It is too risky. So nobody would really want to use this guy, but I built him first in the 2A patch, I think. And he is so funny when he one-tap anything with a defense break. But then he die after that, unless you have a proper setup to make use of him so it's gonna be a fun toy for me personally belladion hmm this guy used to be in here okay and then vigor happened he's a healer defense breaker a great tank but then he doesn't do anything exceptionally well back when i first got my first nat 5 in the game i think it was ariel yeah it was ariel i had that unit i was so happy and then i never used ariel because bella was the best unit in the game back then. He provides just enough healing, great attack by boost, defense break, strip. Oh my god, this unit was everything. But then the game got power crap, so he's, he's just okay now. I think he is the decent PvP, PvE unit. He's like in both places, but he's just okay. You would probably need to use him at some point because of the requirement of the dungeon. Requires you to have a defense unit, for example. Requires you to have a light unit, for example. Then you use this guy. But he's not exceptional in anything. So I'm putting him into the PvE tier because it looks balanced with the PvP right now. Dark Pixie. No, Dark Fairy. Not a fan. Putting the don't have to tier. Doesn't do anything exceptional. Dark Pixie. 
Okay, I have this unit max skill. I have used it here and there for fun. I don't even make a video about it. I just use it for, for my personal enjoyment. And the increased cool time is really cool. He's like a free-to-play Zyros. And uh, skill 3 is actually pretty cool as well. But she needs skill up. And a lot of people don't have the time for that or the resources. So I put her into the fun toy. Dark Warbear. Oh my god. This unit used to be so much. I used to abuse this guy because he's so funny. He's stunned. He do a lot of funny things. He does a decent amount of damage. But he also needs skill up. And ain't nobody got time for that. But he can be a funny toy. And he used to be decent in TOA as well. Crow. Probably in the must-do tier, one of the biggest single target damage for all the dungeon out there. Even though he's only a PvE unit, I've never seen this unit succeed in any PvP team unless you just want to have fun. Um, but he's a must-do unit, even though he's PvE only. But he's that good, and he's that crazy in almost every dungeon. He deserves to be in the must-do tier. Mina! Ooh, Water Cat used to be crazy when Daphnis was meta, when Vert was not as tanky nowadays on Triple Revenge Max Res. Used to be insane in PvP against Fire Unit, but now, not enough damage. So usually you will see her in Siege Offense against maybe Shina Matina, just some small Siege Offense team, you will see this unit, and that is pretty much it. Fire werewolf can be an insane fire tank if he's immune to defense break huh maybe maybe this is gonna be the unit come to us with a great passive but he's not he can't tank really well his healing is not amazing he doesn't do any real damage so he sucks as a fire tank so not a huge fan and nowadays if you want to use a fire tank you have either arno or harmonia both are incredible at tanking and also doing good damage at the same time so this unit is pretty irrelevant in even four star siege content Firecat. So this unit can cause some controversy, okay? I used to not like this unit, but people swear by this unit name that the fire, the Firecat is incredible in Siege Offense because Skogo was so meta on defense. You use this unit, you destroy Skogo HP, and Skogo doesn't really need real damage anymore. But that meta has passed, so as this unit. So probably going to be a fun toy for many people. Personally, would not be using this thing. Win Werewolf can be underrated, but this guy is a problem. His increased cooldown time with the passive is great, but it depends on his HP situation. So you cannot really use him to tank a fire unit because if you tank too much damage, you can't perform the passive. So it's kind of weird. He's a bruiser unit, but he shouldn't tank damage. So not a huge fan of this thing. Probably going to be in the don't have to tier unless they buff his passive to work regardless of his HP condition. Then I'll probably bring him back for some fun time because... Increased cool time, and he's great into the wind, light, and water siege meta defense. Right now, many wind, light, water. So a wind unit is going to be very, very good in those situations. But then he's just kind of bad. Wind martial cat, PvE unit for early game player. The damage fall off very quickly when you have better runes and you start using more crow and more five-star unit. But for early game player, this unit will save your ass because you doesn't need good runes on this unit and it's still going to do amazing damage crit all the time great for giants good for starter players so it's going to be in the pve tier asher personally triple s tier for me one of the best free to play unit in the game for rta for siege and for some pve content as well if it requires you to have a light unit and a healer this guy is incredible and to, to together with asher he's just he's just insane very very good unit Light Marshall Cat. Okay, not a huge fan. A light tank, but then not exactly good at doing so. Would die very fast, require you to build damage on her. So not a huge fan. Jotan is actually... I don't use this unit a lot, but I know a lot of Siege players use this unit because you can tank so many light units on defense. Light is a very popular element on defense because of Iris and Kinky. And some of the light units like Light Kung Fu Girl, so a dark tank is extremely amazing. And he also performs as a defense breaker in some PvE team as well. So you know what? Because you are so good in many different content, I'll put you in the must-do tier. And also, every turn defense break is absolutely amazing. Miho used to be must-do. Used to be a tier on her own, okay? This unit used to break so many people will to live. But now it's a fun toy. Can be decent in some offense team against a defense that is so badly built that the Miho can counter the entire defense. But it's going to be a fun toy for some player pretty much the water bird so this guy is really popular among the nephthys user in rta 
because he does a lot of damage, he turns cycling, and he counter the fire unit that counter Nephthys. So he can be a pretty fun toy for you to build if you decide to. And he can do some decent damage as a water unit. So it can be good against Harmonia, Vigor, Light, Defense. Spectra. Ooh, PvE God. Okay. Carry every single early game player TOA. Carry your ass in Dragon nowadays as well. Carry you in 2A Dimensional Hold. Carry you everywhere in PvE. Not a PvP unit, but hey, we have seen him in SWC before because he is so fast that using a cleave team or some sort of Asher boost will be slower than her. The, the, the Spectra base speed is insane, but the skill 3 chance to push back is not 100%, so nobody uses her anymore, but a god in PvE. Bernard, another unit that I didn't feel the need to two way, but I did anyway because I use War Young Bernard every single day. So it's gonna be a PvP unit for me. I use them mainly in arena and guild offense to outspeed people like Clara defense and pretty much anything in arena defense. I will use Bernard to outspeed them, cleave them, and that's pretty much it. Shaman, a PvE god in so many PvE nowadays. You use Shaman because of the skill two damage and with the AI buff. Shaman is just a god in PvE. Great damage and useful in so many different dungeons and TOA hell and TOA hard if you want to. So definitely going to be a PvE god in the PvE tier. The Dark Bird. Hmm, fun toy I would say. Can be a great decent dark tank for all the light unit out there. Can be very funny when she's stunned all the time. Just a fun toy pretty much. The new unit. Water Living Armor. Not a huge fan. Okay, the passive can be funny, but you can also ignore this unit. And the uh, AoE defense break is a 50-50 coin flip. Not a huge fan as well. So it's going to be in the don't have to tier. Fire one is actually a must do for some people in PvE because they need this unit to beat the stage 3 of the dimension raid boss. Thanks to the shield that the boss have. So you need this unit to always do damage that ignore shield and buff. So people don't have Kakarno, people don't have Dragon Knight, they have to use this unit. So it's going to be a great PvE unit for that one dungeon only. And that's pretty much it. This unit was made for the Dimension Raid boss. That's it. Copper, great PvP unit, big daddy damage. We don't have to discuss about Copper. Silver, okay. I told a friend to build this. I tried a bit. It was so boring. I didn't want to make a video about it. Bad tier. The Dark One. Oh, the Dark Living Armor is a great PvE unit. For Steel Fortress, probably going to be great in Steel Fortress Abyss as well with the block buff in every single skill. And he's good in that one dungeon. And, and that's pretty much it. He's great in that one dungeon, but he's the best option in that one dungeon. The Fire Bulldozer. Okay, PvP unit, ignore defense, big damage, and same tier as Copper and whatever ranking we have. Win Frank. Ooh. The win of the Light Frank, personally, I've played with them. I have so much fun with them on Raigeki account. But he has a Laura, so that is not a very realistic demonstration of how good they are. But I would say these two units can be in the fun toy tier. I use a lot of the Light Frank. You know, Light Frank is going to be my personal bias in the PvP tier. I use this unit for guild offense, and he does so much damage. It's so much fun to play with. The win one, probably going to be a niche win tank. The Dark One, I had so much hope for this guy. But his damage, his tankiness is... It reset every turn. It's lame. And he's not that tanky compared to other usual Dark Tank that I use. So he can be in the Don't Have To tier. Or maybe he can be in the PvP tier. He's like a free-to-play Dark Tank. And that's about it. You have seen him do like a billion damage. It requires two days of stacking. So <laughs> not sure if that's going to be a good thing or a bad thing. But that's pretty much it. I hope this video is not too long. That is my 2A tier list. If you agree, if you disagree, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.